Let's disassemble our compact SLT. First, remove your battery if you have it. Then, remove the rear screws. Six in total, four small ones on the four corners. Two long ones in the top center. Let's put those aside. Now you'll notice hopefully the back has kind of started to separate. We'll open the lid. These pull forward and up. Put those aside. You need to unplug your keyboard. This pulls straight up. It's very difficult. Especially with my non-dominant hand and no index finger on my dominant hand. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. There it goes. Okay. And then you need to twist it out like that. This cable needs to bend sharply and the rubber has become so brittle it breaks easily. So let's put the keyboard aside. You do get some pliers and disconnect this grounding clip. Close this again. Actually not yet. And then you should be able to push forward here to get the chassis to slide out. Moving. There we go. And before we continue here, we have to disconnect the monitor cable. It has a screw, which you don't need to pull out, it'll stay in place. And then there should be a piece of tape that you can pull disconnect the cable. And then put that out of the way. It should all just slide out. Here's our housing. Now you have access to the chassis. Hard drive removes with one, two, three, four, five, six screws here. And there's two more here for eight total. You have to remove this, fold up the uh, shielding, and there's another one here. Foppy has two there. Two here. And the uh, top half of the chassis has two here that I lost a screw earlier. And also, these screws here need to be removed for the top chassis. And there's two more here to get to the rim. So, remove the top of the chassis. We'll remove the ram shield. The two tiny ones on the front lip and two long ones back here. This should pull out status LEDs, the connector, screws, ram. It's an interesting design. And this here is my CMOS battery that I have um, modified to be more easily replaceable in the future. I need to remove these screws. Two and three. 
may have been a fourth one there. I have seemed to have lost a few screws. And we need to remove this, the hard drive cover. Well, not necessarily the whole hard drive cover, but we need to get this out of the way at least so we can unplug the IDE cable. To then get to the next screw down here. That is if you want to remove the screw, but, um, or remove the drive but it's not holding the chassis together, so we will not worry about that right now. But we do need to unplug hard drive power. Then we need to remove the serial module. That wiggles out. I need to bend this tab out a little bit to clear that. Let's recover our screws. That's one. And two. Now we need to remove our power supply. There's a screw here. And a screw here. And this also it just slide out, and there's a ribbon cable here. You can just pull that up. There it is. Let's put that aside. And then to get the chassis up, we need to remove this screw, which is missing, and this screw. And the same over here. This screw. more we need to remove these because they are holding the two halves together yeah and then one last part so this funny little clip here that we need to pull up with some pliers there we go so you can see now it's all starting to separate It's holding it down. Oh, flat cable. Oh, I do need to remove this screw back here underneath the ID cable, which is a long one. Put this up. And pull forward because these two, these five tabs here mate into holes there. So here is our RTC, which I have a video replacing and access to the board. Go processor, main processor, built-in RAM, and support components. Yeah.